Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming miniature video. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building some Sarissa Precision Bombed Out House. Okay, this is number uh, 025, the World War Europe line, which is the World War II line. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. And I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue uh, because it's going to give it some stickiness. i got a work area, and I've got some wax paper laid down. So if any glue leaks out, it will drip onto the wax paper. That's the plan. Now there's the instructions. Uh, there are eight steps. And what do we get? We get some window shutters. And this is a card stock. And it looks like a door maybe a door frame we'll have to figure that out let's get a door frame that looks like maybe a window yeah it looks like it's going on the inside of the window and this is going over it okay so maybe that's a door okay that is a door okay and there are only two pieces so it should be fairly quickly put together okay so what we're going to do is because of the way they explain the model what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop all the pieces out which are as you can see are coming out fairly easily we're going to just pop all the pieces out and if they have any like little nibs or nubs or slots that your uh, other pieces would fit into we're just going to try to pop those out those don't come out easily we'll just use an exacto knife to pop them out got cracked walls cracked uh what do you call it plaster okay oh this actually has some slots okay let me pop these out too Alright, so give me a couple of minutes to get all these popped out, and then I'll be right back. Now, when, pop, when popping your shutter out, or your um, your A-frame, you need to be careful that this is a fairly fragile piece. So, I have a tendency to uh, bend and work out all the little pieces slowly. Because I don't want to break anything. Okay, that came out too okay. Okay, now on the roof piece, you've got kind of this wooden frame underneath the tiles. Uh, if you're not sure which ones to pop out, kind of look at the bottom where you can see they're cut out. And then pop all those out. Alright, now let's start following these steps and it says glue the card window shutters and door frames to the walls. Okay, so we find the walls that they are talking about. <clears throat> That's one of the walls. And this is a wood shutter. It looks like there's a spot for it just to glue straight on like that. So. I'm going to put some aliens on the cardboard. Then I'm going to use my 
Mark I glue applicator to spread the glue out over the entire cardstock. Place it directly over the window sill. Give it some pressure, cleaning off any excess. Okay. One ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Okay. <clears throat> My understanding is all the windows get one. Okay, now this door frame <clears throat> is only held by the top and not the bottom. So the bottom pieces have a tendency to want to like shift and slide. So make sure you get one of them, apply some really good pressure, and then move to the second one, apply some pressure, pushing it down so it wants to grip. And that's one reason why I use the tacky glue. That way it doesn't allow it to slip and slide. Yeah, that looks good. Now we're going to have to do the inside with this door frame, and I guess it's going to look something like that. You know what, I'm just going to apply the glue directly to the inside here. And that is because it is on the inside. can't really line it up on the back side so I have to get to the inside or the outside I should say and look through the door so that I can line everything up Also trying to make this parallel down here, which keeps it from sticking up too high <clears throat> up here. Okay, the outside frame needs to be adjusted because I must have pushed on a little bit. Yep, there we go. Need some pressure. Yep, that 
stuff here. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to let that sit and dry for a moment while we move on to the next step. It says glue the door inside the wall panel optional. Well, I went ahead and did it. Maybe on the second one when I do it, I won't. Okay, push the ground floor front and back walls into the front end and the damaged end wall. Looks like the floor goes like that. There's a little damaged end wall, which I suspect is this. That's going to go right there. Push fit the ground floor front and back walls into the full end wall and into the damaged end wall. Ah, I get it. They're saying take this, push these down into this. Okay, got it. And fit them into the front. Okay, got it. So we're going to apply glue along the base here. And in this case, I am going to apply some glue along the bottom edge of this and to where it's supposed to meet up with that. So that presses right on in in there. fit on the end. And it looks like there's a bottom half of this wall in the back. But that's going to go in and connect. I need to put the backside wall in, which is a square off piece. Okay. It's kind of the piece with this little brick sticking out. And that's going to go right on in there. Let's go ahead and uh, apply the glue to that. And that fits in pretty easily. Back piece doesn't want to go all the way in. Ah, there we go. I was noticing a little bit of a gap between the wall and the floor. Okay. Now the back wall, because these pins are so far apart, it's got to be these. They fit in right, and then it's going to click right on in there. So what we'll do is we'll apply glue to this whole thing here. The top, the middle, bottom of the peg, and then right along the edge here. Then under the peg, between the pegs, and above the peg. There we go. See how this works. Yeah, 
it should go into the wall there. Oh, it did. That was pretty easy. Top one. These pegs here are a little bit tighter. Ooh. Yeah. It's a lot tighter on that one. There it goes. You got to kind of squeeze both ends of the wood because you don't want to break anything, right? Yeah, that was a nice tight fit there. Okay, clean off any excess that might damage your details, like on the bricks. Remember, it is rubble, so it's going to be damaged, so there's no real super concern for that. But just in case. This front wall, okay. All right. So far, so good. Next step. Okay, repeat this with the first floor walls. Okay. So what they're trying to say is you have a floor... I consider this to be the ground floor, this to be the first floor. That's the way it is in Europe. Uh, in the United States, this is the first floor and this is the second floor. But they, in Europe, it's done differently. Okay, so this is going to go on there like that. There will be a damaged wall on this side as well as here. Yeah, you want to make sure you get it in the right holes because these other holes are going to fit down on to the base. Now, because it's so open like this, you could not glue this. I mean, you could glue this because you can reach in there and get models. Or you could not glue it and then just be able to take this on and off. Uh, but I think I'm going to glue that down. Yeah, it doesn't say to glue it down to this piece, but I think I'm going to. Okay, we got glue on the inside there. Find out which holes this pairs up with. Press it in, press it in, press it in. Okay. Ah, here's the other wall. And then this one will go similarly on that side. attached to the okay so I put glue all around behind and on top
had to lift it up just slightly so that the pegs would go in. Okay. Push down. Make sure all the pegs are all the way in. You can see they're not. Now that looks like it's more complicated to attach the roof. I think I should just do that. There we go. The roof is attached. It might or might not be glued. I think there was one peg that had some glue on it, so I don't know. Yeah, just leave it. Okay, so we put the second floor on. It just snapped in. Okay. Now we're going to start working with the chimney. We've got this piece. We got these. There should be three of these. There it is, and the chimney top. Okay. Uh, the way they're showing it is they even have it listed A and B. None of these have any like brickwork or anything, so they should all be the same. Yeah, these are all the same. Okay, so this guy is going to lay right on top of this flush. This. Can also lay right up on top of that flush, and then this one will lay on the outside flush. Because when I put it in, it's going to rest. Doesn't make sense. It makes sense. Okay, hold on. It, it does make sense, but it makes this stick out from the wall just a little bit. I don't know if they want that. We'll find out as I put it together. Okay, glue the chimney side roof support parts together to form a chimney. And then under that it says A, glue panel A, chimney pot shaped panel to the gable support. pieces are all exactly the same size, so I don't understand what they're talking about. Pot shaped. And these are pot 
pot shaped. <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. Okay, so we're just gonna glue based on the picture. Putting glue on the ins on the chimney here. We're gonna glue the one with the smokestacks against the other one with the smokestacks. Lining it up on the sides, lining it up on the top, going as as even as possible. Never gonna have perfect, but squeeze, allow to dry a moment. See, I think this should go like right against the wall like that. But no, they don't want me to do that. They are showing one on the inside, so we're going to do it. Maybe there is going to be like a little gap. Take another one of these, I'm lining it up to the top. I'm lining it up on the sides. Trying to get it to go straight up and down. So it'll have perfect lines on the side. Perfect line at the top. Squeeze, allow some glue to adhere to it. And then there's one more on the inside. Well, I guess either one of those could be the inside. some glue directly to the top. Because that's where this piece goes. It's tight. Two chimneys have got to fit up into these holes. like that from when you pop the pieces out might remain making it hard for your chimney to fit in
decided to go get a little help from my pliers here. A little bit of time because you want to break the wood. going down. Well, I doubt if that piece is going to be coming off anytime soon, but yeah, it went all the way down. It pressed up against the, the glue and all that. Okay, I'm going to set that off to the side just for a second. Glue the rectangular panels each side of the assembly as shown. Push these up to align with the top cap underside. Okay. <laughs> All right. They're saying put this on and then glue these two pieces on second and just push them up to line up with the top. Okay, that might have been a, a better way to do it, but... You got it done. Okay, now you have the uh, roof panels, right? And They go, they're lengthwise up, not like, not this way. They're straight up and down like that. Uh, you, there is a piece that you glue them onto here. This being the chimney piece. We're gonna glue that on right there to the chimney gable or whatever they call this thing. Remember the double is on the inside. Okay. This chimney gable has given me the most grief out of all of them. Out of all the Sarissa buildings that I've made, this is the worst. Okay, now we're going to put the other side on, and it's not really, 
It doesn't go together as easy as all the other Sarissa buildings that I've ever made. This is a very... I'm not going to say tight fit. I'm going to say it's a little misaligned. Not to the point where it can't be put together, but... Yep, both of them did the same thing. Okay. For me to attach these, I had to actually break the piece. Um, which, a little bit of glue, that little piece will hang off the edge or whatever. Uh, it'll just look like battle damage. But it shouldn't have had to have done that. It should have snapped on well. And there's one more piece here that glues on inside both of those two spots. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of glue there and there, and there and there. So then you get a look kind of like that, where you get this crossbar, and then you get this chimney, incomplete chimney, and then when you put it on, you just set it on right there. That just comes right off now. I guess I could glue that. Those two little pieces that I was talking about, they won't show up as battle damage. They're actually in the way of this going flush against the back wall. You're going to have to pop them off if they break for you as like they broke for me. So just break that off. And now it lays flush against the back wall. All right, and that is the rubble building. Do I like it? Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's going to be playable. You can put models down inside there. All right. You'll be able to put guys down there. They're going to be able to be by the door or the window. I can get into there and move them around. This will come off, so it'll make it a lot easier for me to maneuver stuff around the top floor. Then I can just put that back on, or I can just leave it on. It doesn't matter. That's super easy to get to. I could even probably glue this down. It doesn't say to, to glue it down, but I could glue it down. Now, I don't know what this little notch here is for. There's a little notch right there. I have no idea what that notch is for. Uh, it might be a holdover from another building, but it's not explained here. That looks good. This does need to be painted, of course. And this does come right off, so yeah. Once I let those that glue dry inside there, you could do that. I don't know. Could I do this? I could if I wanted to. I suppose I could do something like that. It works all right. I could have like a little one-story 
rubble building if I wanted to pull this off. Or I could put this back on and put that back on. And I could have a two-story rubble building. All right, guys. Thanks for coming out and checking this uh, Sarissa building construction video out. And uh, look forward to me maybe painting this as part of my market garden project. All right, guys. Catch you next time.